Um, and I want to thank Minister Butler uh, for taking this question on behalf of uh, Minister Rabbit. Um, and this is a very important but yet very pressing issue uh, in my constituency of Dunleary. And at the outset, I want to acknowledge Minister Rabbit's uh, ongoing efforts and engagement uh, with both the families and indeed the staff and service users of Dunmore House and Carmona Services particularly right throughout the pandemic. Um, Minister Rabbit has been very generous with her time engaging over Zoom and on-site meetings uh, with uh, all those involved. Um, but parents and guardians and friends of Carmona Services have been in contact with me of, um, over the last couple of days, Minister. Um, and they're really concerned. Not only were they concerned prior to this uh, latest twist in respite care locally, but they were also very concerned about the ongoing waiting list for respite generally uh, in CHO6. But they've been advised uh, by written correspondence from the HSE and uh, St John of God's that a house, a respite house in Wyatville Park has been allocated solely to one individual. Now that is as a result of a court case um, and while we acknowledge and understand the need to allocate that particular uh, property uh, to one individual and, and, and it's obviously needed, um, there is now a situation where there is 88 people uh, waiting for uh, respite. Uh, as well as an additional 33 people waiting on a waiting list uh, and many of their uh, respite hours are now in jeopardy because this property was a key uh, you know, tool in respite within uh, the, the area and of course for those families. And it's the only respite house available to those ADA people with intellectual disabilities and it's causing extreme uh, distress to families and hardship. Uh, some have been offered alternative uh, respite that's 130 kilometres away uh, in Wexford, which is not obviously suitable. Um, and I know the Minister recently committed to €9 million Euro for the provision of respite care, uh, which is very welcome. Uh, but we have a situation in CHO6, Dunleary, Dublin South East and North Wicklow that we have lost key respite services. Uh, and it's causing huge distress, as I say, to the parents and indeed to families. Uh, just as we're beginning to return to some lev level of normality, they have no clarity on respite. Um, so I would ask the Minister uh, to engage with the officials in her department, uh, with the HSC and with St John of God's, to try and expedite the um, purchase, I, I, I suppose, of a new respite uh, property. Um, I know these can't be done overnight. Um, but the letter itself is quite vague in that regard. It alludes to the purchase and provision of, a, of more respite services, which was already needed anyway. But this particular problem has exacerbated the issue facing these families and indeed the individuals with intellectual disabilities. So if we can fast track uh, the purchase of a property, um, all that, entail, that entails with planning uh, and re retrofitting a property. Um, but it is a, a real urgency, Minister, and that's why I raise it here today. Uh, and as I say, I thank Minister Butler for taking it on behalf of Minister Abbott, who I knew, know couldn't be here. Um, but um, thank you very much, Kian, uh, Las Kian Corda. Kian Corda. Um, I want to thank Deputy Devlin for raising this issue for discussion today. And as you quite rightly said, I'm taking this on behalf of the Minister of State for Disabilities, uh, Minister Rabbit. As the Deputy will be aware, throughout the pandemic, staff and resources associated with closed or curtailed services were redeployed where possible to support residential provision and to provide for targeted in-home, community and tele-online supports for service users and families based on prioritised need. For those with a disability and their families, this impact of the pandemic on those services has presented challenges which are still felt today. The HEC is very much aware of the importance of respite service provision for the families of both children and adults with disabilities and the impact the absence of respite services provision can have on other services being delivered. Regarding the specific issues of respite provision in CHO6, the HEC is aware of the recent escalations by service users and their families in relation to access to St John of God Respite House um, at Whiteville and Ravenswell. Occasionally, respite services must be temporarily curtailed to accommodate urgent emergency residential situations. Unfortunately, this is currently the case with the respite service in, in Whitefield, which has been impacted since the week commencing the 21st of February 2022. In order to manage the emergency situation, the only available and appropriate option was to use Whitefield 
and a staff team on an alternative location and an additional staff team are recruited. And as you know, Deputy, that can take some time. The HEC advised that families were contacted by St John of God Services in early February to outline the situation and that Community Healthcare East further contacted families on the 24th of February, apologising unreservedly for the additional stress the situation has caused. St John of God Services have confirmed to the HEC that there are 69 individuals affected by the repurposing of Whiteville and there are nine individuals on the waiting list. The HEC advises that it is committed as far as possible to support Whitefield respite service users with supported holidays while Whitefield remains inaccessible. But I do take on board the point you made that somebody was offered a holiday in Wexford, which was 130 kilometres away, which can be very difficult for the families. And I will bring that to the attention of the Minister. I can confirm with the Deputy today that the HEC has requested information from St John of God Services regarding the list of service users and their preferences for respite breaks in in order to identify and prioritise individuals to offer interim respite supports. HSE Community Healthcare East is committed to considering these priorities as a matter of urgency within the available funding. Once this information is received, the HEC and St John of God Services will liaise with the alternative service provider to ensure there is limited reduction to the individual scheduled respite provision over the course of the next six months. And communication will issue to all individuals outlining the details of the proposed supported holidays, including any transition plans that are required. Regarding reduced access to respite in Ravenswell, the HEC advised that this is specifically related to ongoing recruitment challenges in the sector. St John of God's services have assured the HEC that they are actively campaigning for additional staffing. Gaurav Mahagut. Gaurav Mahagut, Minister Butler, for that. And, um, Thank you for a copy of your um, statement. Uh, if I can just focus in, I, I specifically didn't mention Ravenswell initially um, because it is part of the problem, but that was pre the latest news about Wyattville Park. Um, and Ravenswell, the challenges uh, that have faced Ravenswell have been there for quite some time. So recruitment has been an issue long before even recruitment generally in every sector in society uh, has been an issue. Um, and I'll come back to that again uh, which, directly with Minister Rabbit, uh, and she is aware of it. But um, if I quote from the statement there, occasionally respite services must be temporarily curtailed, and that's understood, and families unfortunately have uh, witnessed that over the years. Um, but then it says that the HSE has requested information from St John of God services about the list for, for creating a list of priority, uh, which is welcome. But it goes on to say uh, that over the, next, over the co course of the next six months, communication will issue to all individuals outlining the detailed proposed supported holidays, including any transitional or any uh, transition plans uh, that are required. I would ask, Minister, through yourself, uh, if the uh, Department of Health could make urgent contact with the HSE. Um, specifically around speeding up that process. Um, it, there's no lack of resources within uh, the Department of Health or indeed the HSE uh, to try and assist St John of God's because this is having an enormous impact on families uh, in South East Dublin, North Wicklow um, and this news came out as a boat of, of the blue to them um, but as I say they've been impacted for so long by the uh, impact of um, changes in respite, that many of the families can't even plan. They can't plan six weeks, let alone six days in advance, because they don't know when respite's coming. But they do know one thing for sure, and that is respite is not coming for the foreseeable future for any of the individuals who were uh, allocated to Wyattville Park. So again, I'd ask you, Minister Butler, uh, through the Department of Health, to try and speed up the process as quickly as possible. Gurram Agat. Thank you. Um, both my colleague Minister Rabbit and the HEC acknowledge the need for more services to provide much needed respite to service users and their families. And I do take on board the points you have made and which you made initially. Like parents are very concerned and this is very, very difficult for them after two really difficult years. Um, and I will certainly um, um, speak to Minister Rabbit um, in relation to this and to see can it be expedited in any way. Um, I acknowledge the immediate issue in CHO 6 is causing distress to those families affected. I must restate that this is a temporary measure to accommodate an emergency residential situation. I acknowledge and welcome the fact that the HEC is committed to supporting the service users affected by this temporary closure as a matter of priority. 
One of Minister Rabbit's key priorities is building capacity in disability services, particularly in respite, in a safe and equitable manner into the future, so that those who cared for their loved ones are provided appropriate support to continue doing so, no matter where they live in the country. So last year saw a €5 million Euro commitment to build a capacity for a 10,400 extra bed nights for people with disabilities. In 2022, as you've said, €9 million Euro is committed to establish three additional specialist centre-based services to provide 4,032 nights to 90 children, one to be uh, Prado Willie appropriate and the other two to provide high support respite for children and young adults with complex support needs. In addition, seven further respite services, which will provide 9,408 nights to 245 children and adults in a full year. But I do take on board the point you've made. Uh, it's, it's the short-term issue for the, the families who used to receive respite in Whiteville, notwithstanding the difficult situation um, that they were in. But I will certainly bring your concerns to the Minister. Thank you very much for your time.